This program raises questions. This program is for people who find it hard to trust God. The best answers are wrapped in flesh and blood. My friends, people who are enduring real tragedies every single day. Quadriplegia, muscular dystrophy, stroke, bankruptcy, loneliness, singleness. We're gonna to talk to those very people who have touched my life. When we're young, we're so full of hopes and dreams, but what happens when those hopes and dreams are strangled by people, good people, who say, you can't do it? Well, my friend Mary Jane Pontaine, with her disability, experienced this and more, but she was not about to let her dream die. And once you meet her, I think you'll understand why. people that is really a great lesson not to judge a book by its cover. I 
remember the first time I met Mary Jane. She was just a puzzle to me. I love life. And I enjoy life. There's a difference here. I love life and I enjoy it. I love life and boy, I enjoy it. I love it. What really drew me to her is her sense of humor. Because I, I love to laugh and I, I love to play practical jokes. She can one-up you on just about everything. She'll make fun of herself and she'll make fun of others, and especially people like John Warren, who has traveled a lot with her. Uh, they'll go back and forth. I was picking her up at the airport down at Los Angeles at LAX, and uh, she came out in her wheelchair and uh, rolled up uh, to the car, and then she stood up out of the wheelchair, and so we started playing off of her. In Jesus' name, she's healed! and she walks over, you know, to me and, you know, somebody's taking pictures of it and, and it just is just a lot of fun. As time went on and I experienced different things with her, she amazed me at every turn and the depth of who she was uh, was just, just revealed itself over time. At the age of 12, I felt called to China to be a missionary. So that led me to college. I had to have an education to go to the mission field. And just through college, I found that I made one mistake. I found out that I had to have a personal relationship with Christ. I skipped that trip. I was called to be missionary, but I wasn't a true Christian. So after I, I said, okay, Lord, take me. And I looked from that day on, I belonged to him, he belonged to me. But then I got out of college and found out no missionary board would ever take me. Mary Jane Pontaine was born with cerebral palsy at a time when people really didn't understand. I wish I had known her when she was growing up to see how she overcame so many things that were supposed to be impossible for somebody with her condition. But uh, with the support and encouragement of her parents and uh, just her own strong will, uh, she has accomplished so much in her life. So I took a job. Marshall Field Company. I was still auditing. Low grade accountant, so to say. Very low grade. But it was a job. And I was told, you will learn to support yourself. Life, life did not come with guarantees. So I worked for nine years, and the one that was happened, I fell in love. Got married. Moved to Spokane, Washington. We were not looking for partners. He was like me, very independent. He had his own business. He was a prisoner. And we fell in love. My husband was also physically challenged. He had cerebral palsy also. He was very short, six foot six. And four foot eleven. I was four foot eleven. Now I'm not four foot nine. But we together made a life for ourselves. It was a wonderful life. We had 27 years together. After Bud died, she decided to start her own ministry based on the story of Mephibosheth, which was one of Jonathan's sons who had broken his legs and had become disabled, but went on to, to eat at the king's table and to run his own household. 
And that's when I met her. And not long after, I, I invited her to come and be a speaker at, at one of our conferences. No way, girl. Sorry, can't you 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 have to get you wanna go? Forget it, kid. And so uh, she came and she was uh, speaking in a workshop and I was sitting in the workshop listening to her and like everybody else kind of mesmerized by by her honesty, by her sense of humor and by her understanding of, of disability and non-disability. So we got to the end of it and you know the bell rang and it was time to move on and and so like a fool I said uh, well we could stay and keep listening to Mary Jane or you could come to my workshop which is going to be across the hallway. Uh, lesson one learned never do that because everybody but me stayed in the classroom because they they realized they were involved in something that was different than they'd heard in the past that they were hearing uh, from somebody's heart and experience which they didn't hear very often from people with disabilities they often heard from people talking about their ministry to people with disabilities and then not long after that wheels for the world formed and i asked her to go to ghana for the one years later that word has Africa, because I was disabled, not in spite of it. God has a plan. I had to be willing to wait in and use my disability, not in spite of it, because of it. I asked her to go to Ghana because she had a disability. When she was just a teenager, she couldn't go because she had a disability. On her first trip, the Ghanaians were kind of standoffish, and they just kept staring at her, but they wouldn't approach her. And then they started referring to her by this word. And John finally asked him, what, what does that word mean? We, we got off the airplane, we met at the airport, came in, went to the distribution, went to the second distribution. Then we found out that uh, they were calling Mary Jane the White Witch. Why are you calling her a white witch? He says, well, anybody that gets that old and looks like that in Ghana has to be a witch. It wasn't a compliment, let's just say. And, and so as time went on, uh, you heard it less and less. But when we were, when we were ready to leave, and we lined up at, at the airport to say goodbye. The line was in front of her. The, the lineup of people saying goodbye, they were saying goodbye to her and calling her mama. Everybody wanted to be around Mary Jane. I mean, she just won them over by her personality. And no more white witch, it was mama, which is very respectful in that, in that culture. Now, of course they said goodbye to us, but her personality, because she didn't lash back at them. She allowed the Holy Spirit to work on their hearts. And she did what she was called to do. And that spoke volumes to them. Our first trip to China with Johnny and friends. We had talked the evening before about how it's our desire to always be able to give a copy of the Bible with a wheelchair that we distribute to someone in need. Not as a requirement, but we just wanted to be able to give it as a gift. Well, China's a communist country. It was our first time there. We knew that it was not gonna be possible. And uh, we hoped that one day the door would open so that after they had gained trust with us, they would, they would allow us to distribute Bibles. So the next morning, we were uh, meeting with this disability federation. Um, just these very stoic communist party members and they wanted to hear our stories and what our role was on the team and so Mary Jane sat at the end she was the very last person 
and they had just kind of ignored her this whole time. And so we went down the line, explained who we were, and then Mary Jane's turn came up and she stood up and of course she's even standing up, she's not much taller than most of us sitting. <laughs> and she told the story of how when she was 11 years old, she went to church and there was a missionary there talking to the congregation, trying to encourage people to enter the mission field. And she got so excited about becoming a missionary and specifically felt called to be a missionary in China. So after the service, he welcomed anybody who wanted to talk about becoming a missionary and she got in line all excited, waiting her turn to get to the front. And when she got there, the guy blinked and said, well, what can I do for you? She said, I want to be a missionary to China. And he blinked again and said, you can't be a missionary. She said, well, why not? He said, well, you're disabled. And everybody in the room was just, just captured by her telling the story. And all of a sudden she said, so I went away so disappointed because I really wanted to be a missionary to China. And here I am. 60 years later, I'm a missionary to China because I'm disabled. And the tears were flowing of some of the communist women who were there who were, who were pretty stoic up until that point. And I sensed there was an opening for that question to be asked about the Bibles, and so did our team leader. And so he just presented the question in a very diplomatic way. They consulted for about 30 seconds and they said yes we understand that uh, that would be fine and we've been distributing bibles with every wheelchair since day one and i think it was because of mary jane my mom is amazing she has extreme compassion for people and cerebral palsy gives her the ability to relate to the people that she's trying to reach She's one of them. And then she gets to teach the rest of us who aren't disabled how um, disabled people can fit into society and do everything that everybody else in society can do. You know, as children, we, we really didn't have anything that was different. Um, we just had a mother that looked different. She was absolutely in every way capable of doing anything anybody else's mother did. Without that handicap, she wouldn't have been able to accomplish the things for God that she's accomplished. And I, I just, she's amazing. You know, as kids, we, we couldn't go anywhere uh, in town without somebody recognizing her. Whether it was from a prior speech maybe she had given, or, you know, she spoke in a lot of the area high schools. I would go with her to some of these classes up at the high schools when I was a high schooler. And you'd see people just following behind her, making fun of her, you know, and by the time she was done with the class, she'd get up there and, and tell people, look at me, I'm, funny, I walk funny, I talk funny, I, I move funny, but I'm just like you. And by the time she'd be done with the class and teaching them about disability, she'd have an escort of most of the kids in the class escorting her back out to the parking lot. And then years later, you'd see somebody in the grocery store come up and say, Mary Jane, you don't remember me, but you taught at our high school class three years ago at Harrison High School, or whichever high school it was. And so I just want you to know that that really touched me and it really meant a lot to me that, that I think you're a wonderful person and you told us to come up and say hi to you when we saw you out in public, so that's what I'm doing. And that's just the impact she has on people. And that's not people with disabilities, that's the normal Joe Schmo, you and me on the street. It's what keeps her alive, I mean, she is after all, you know, struggling with a, a frame, a physical body that, you know, is aged much, much faster than, than we would. And so I think that's what keeps her alive. I think that, you know, if she was not able to do these things, uh, I think she would perish. I really do. The last time I was in China with her, she was going on her own to the southern part of China to speak at a school for disabled children and her reputation had just spread around the country about who she was. I asked her caregiver who traveled with her, you know, how the trip went, and she said Mary Jane was phenomenal. The first question she asked the parents was, what, what dreams do you have for your kids? And the parents would say things like, oh, we just hope that they can be able to learn how to use the bathroom by himself, or that she'll be able to feed herself, or get dressed by herself. That's, that's, how the, that's where their dreams were. Then she told her life story and then asked the question again, okay, now, what would you dream for your kids? Oh, that she could become a teacher, 
that she could become a doctor and all these things. She just elevated their expectations for their child's life because of what she had done. Having been to so many different countries with Mary Jane and so many situations, I think the most touching ones are the times when she dresses a group of people with disabilities. And you can see just by their face, just by the look on their faces, that she's changing their own limitations on themselves or their child or on themselves as a person with a disability where they're not going to be able to hold me back. I, I know that um, I can do things. I, I can be um, something more than I ever dreamed that I could be. And, and I, I think it takes somebody like Mary Jane to do that because she's not telling you you can, she's showing you you can. She's already there. She's in your country, she's in your culture, she's standing right there talking to you. So often, uh, we place limitations on ourselves. We don't do things because we think we can't. And then you look at Mary Jane, 80 plus years old, traveling the world. Yes, she needs help to do these things, but so many people would just give it up and say, ah, oh, I can't do this anymore, and just throw in the towel and go sit in their chair and watch television. And she's not ready to settle for that. You know, she will figure out, okay, I need this kind of support to continue to do ministry. And she'll figure out a way to do it. And she's off to Bolivia and other places where most people wouldn't even go when they're fully healthy and able-bodied. You know, she has such a calling on her life to meet the needs of other people and to tell the, the message of Jesus that she will do anything to continue doing that. And I really believe that um, if she died on the mission field in some remote place, that's how she would like to go. Yeah, she, she is not one that's gonna wanna sit still at the end of her life. This is a person with a disability like Johnny that's saying life is not over. Life has changed, but it could be more than you ever thought it could be. When she wanted to be a missionary, was a missionary to one country. Now she's been a missionary in maybe 15 countries and it had an impact on them. Her, her, her book is even in Chinese, in, in Mandarin, so that, that they, they can read about her in, in the different in schools and families, and so her legacy will go on. But the, the, to see the, the look on the faces of the children and the parents when she talks about how she has people said you couldn't, and yet she never read in scripture where God says you can't. If I do hard for myself, people don't want to be around me. If I'm happy, I need to get jobs. People like to be around me. I was in my office one day, and uh, I get this email, and the opening line was, are you sitting down? I got an email from a friend who said, did you hear Mary Jane's getting married? That I just had to laugh. I've been on this place for years. Last summer, a friend of mine in church was looking so forlorn and lonely. I felt so sorry for him. His wife is dying I guess it doesn't surprise me. My thing was, you go, girl. Congratulations to the newlyweds, albeit in their 80s. And it just proves that Mary Jane Pontaine knows how to make the best of her ability in disability. And say, Fred, I love you. I love you. And I commit this ring to you. <laughs> yeah, I love you. In love. <laughs> 
you keep, keep going, kid. There you go, it's coming. <laughs> Their first fight. <laughs> right now, I'd like to pronounce that you and Mary Jane are husband and wife. And you may kiss the bride. In God's perfect time, all her hopes and dreams were realized after all. That's a lesson for you and me. Because if we hear the unmistakable call of God on our lives, there is nothing, there is nobody who can stifle His voice. And Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11 assures us that He will make everything beautiful in its time. Because the God of the Bible absolutely delights in showcasing our weaknesses before a skeptical and a cynical world. God wants to use you, not in spite of your limitations and weaknesses, but because of them. So, friend, never give up and push into the glorious calling of Jesus Christ on your heart. And God will do beautiful things in His time. There are so many lessons to be learned from watching Mary Jane's life, you know, for, and above all, not to write off people with disabilities. They have so much ability behind their disability. They have so much potential that we don't even understand unless we give them a chance. And even in our own lives, you know, how often we let our fears hold us back from doing things. All you have to do is look at Mary Jane and just say, you know what, just go for it. You'll figure it out, just go for it. Being around Mary Jane just changes your life. I chose to tell I'm not disabled. I'm a person. My parents, they taught me. I'm a person. I happen to have a handicapped condition. This program was made possible by the generous support of a friend of the ministry. Join us again next week for Johnny and Friends.